Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with random reviews from the overflow room. Letter W, we're at the beginning of the W's. We're at the end of the beginning of the letter W, because we're W-A. And you know who some of the big W-A's are. None of the, oh, hi, Finster. And we're here with Finster as well. Finster's popping around and visiting. We have Franz Waxman. Really a great, great, great film composer, a great composer generally, because great film composers are great composers by definition. You know, not all great composers are film composers, but all great film composers are great composers, I would say. And so let's go through this and see what goodies we have. And boy, do we have some goodies. I mean, some serious goodies. We have The Silver Chalice, the original motion picture score, composed and conducted by Franz Waxman. Yes, and let's see, on Tsunami, it's a regularly household word of a label. Uh, the Story of Ruth, also on Tsunami. This is also composed and conducted by Waxman. See the tail? Oh God, she's in the storage bin. I have to get her out of that at some point. Now she'll find her way out and make a lot of noise doing it, I'm sure. Uh, Prince Valiant, the entire film score. Let's see, let's, uh, who's conducting this thing? This pressing is limited to 3,000 copies. Oh, wow. From 20th Century Fox, 1954. Doesn't say much else about it. But, uh, you know, I'll, we can go find it ourselves. I mean, he had such a wonderful range of stuff. Oh, this is one of my all-time favorites. Taurus Bulba with Tony Curtis and Yul Brynner. A perfectly horrible film with Fabulous music. It includes includes the ride to Dubno. Do you know Do you know what happens? The ride to Dubno is when you know they're riding off to battle, and you see one guy with his horse gallop. They're Cossacks, right? He's galloping along the steps, and then there's two, and then there's three, and then you know they're all waiting in line, like it really happens that way in real life. But it created this fabulous scenario that Waxman wrote this dynamite orchestral piece of fireworks. Um, which can be played separately and should be, and it's in that Charles Gerhardt um, Franz Waxman series, the disc that he did for the fil great film, classic film score series on RCA, with slightly different orchestration, a little louder, it's more fun. This is a wonderful, wonderful performance. It's very dry studio ambience. I mean, there's like no reverberation whatsoever. And so you, know, you hear un the whole score with unbelievable clarity. Now this has been remade Taurus Bulba, the complete Taurus Bulba, not just this business of, you know, the, the original film score bits that they used in the film is the whole, the whole Megillah um, to, on two discs, which you can also get, which is quite fabulous. So there you go. Taurus Bulba is one of the great ones. Sunset Boulevard, this is the Charles Gerhardt thing that has the Taurus Bulba thing on it. And I've talked about this rather recently, so we don't need to do it again. This is one of those incarnations from that amazing series that began to reveal to us the, the incredible brilliance and magnificence of our film music heritage. So yeah, Charles Gerhardt does Waxman. Um, and then we've got, let's see, James Sedaris and the New Zealand Symphony. Oh, this is fun stuff. This is Waxman's Rhapsody for Piano and Orchestra from the film The Paradigm Case and Herman's uh, Concerto Macabre from Hangover Square. Alex North's Piano Concerto with Trumpet Obligato, which is a wonderful work. Does anyone know it? No! Franz Waxman's The Charm Bracelet and Herman's Prelude for Piano, a little minute and 53 second encore. This is really cool. This is on Koch International Classics and it probably no longer exists. That's why it's here, hopefully, to be preserved against, you know, future depredations. Uh, Franz Waxman, Objective Burma. Oh, this is a wonderful score. This is with the Moscow Symphony and William Stromberg. It's a Marco Polo um, reconstruction, you know, with John Morgan and those guys who did such wonderful work on behalf of these scores. So you get complete restored music that wasn't used in the film. It's a fantastic sort of war battle type piece, as you can tell from the, you know, the cover. One of, one of Waxman's really, really great scores. And this delicious disc of of Lawrence Foster with the Orchestra Sinfonica di Barcelona y Nacional di Catalunya. Well, you wouldn't pronounce it really that way, but what the hell. 
Um, we, it's got all kinds of cool little Waxman concert works. The old Lang Syne variation is for strings, violin, and piano, which is hilarious. And his version of the Romanian Rhapsody for Ionescu and the Carmen Fantasy for trumpet and orchestra. The Tristan and Isolde love music for violin and piano, his Sinfonietta for string orchestra and timpani. Guayana, four sketches for solo piano, percussion, and strings with Christina Ortiz. Really a wonderful disc. This is also on Koch International Classics. It'll probably go on forever. Um, oh, part of the Antarctica series. This is Waxman's uh, The Song of Theresen. It's a 45 minute long, roughly, oratorio that you know, dates from the post war period. Obviously, um, their reactions to, by Jewish composers to you know, the Nazi atrocities perpetuated during World War II. It's really a deeply moving and profoundly significant work. And we have the Hebrew Requiem by Eric Zeisel, which is a whole other thing, really fascinating, this particular disc. You know, if Decca would box up the entire Antarctica music series, we'd really have something, wouldn't we? One of the most important recording projects ever, I'm sure. But since they deleted it all and don't care about it, what are we supposed to do? Rebecca! Rebecca Adriano, I talked about this in my film music videos, so you can, you can go and have a look at that if you'd like. Mr. Skeffington, another Morgan Stromberg production, um, and part of it was co-composed by Paul Dessau, actually, this particular score, a couple of the, couple of the tracks. Um, really a fun little, fun little film there. Uh, let's see, who is this, who is it starring? Look at with those like English people. You know, it looks very, very, very Skeffy. Uh, let's see, what's this thing? Franz Waxman, two symphonic poems for narrator and orchestra with James by James Forsyth. The Spirit of St. Louis and Ruth, the biblical drama. And here they are on Capriccio, which is really cool. Oh yeah, The Bride of Frankenstein. This is a new recording with the Westminster Philharmonic Orchestra conducted by Kenneth Alwyn on Silva Classics. One of the all-time great horror movie scores ever. Really big deal, especially the creation of the female monster, which is on that Gerhardt disc. Totally cool. This, this was a landmark in the history, both of film music and, you know, horror movie film music, because Waxman, this was from the 30s, wasn't it? I mean, early with Boris Karloff and you know, from the, from the uh, whenever it was, uh, whatever date it was, you'll, you know what it was. But, you know, the, the importance of the music was really, really profound in selling the film, which of course is preposterous, but it was fun, fun movie. Uh, oh, oh, look, it's Rebecca again <laughs> with a different cover. And how's this one? Oh, oh, look, this isn't Waxman at all. But you know what? I might as well throw it in here. Music for films by John Wayne. I have it under W. It's, we've got Stagecoach, She Wore a Yellow Ribbon, The Quiet Man, The High and the Mighty, The Searchers, The Alamo, How the West Was Won, The Longest Day, and Harm's Way, True Grit, and The Cowboys. This is on Silva Classics. And it's film music by, by oh my God, all kinds of people, my goodness. Louis Grunberg. Wow, Stagecoach is a narrative for orchestra. Yeah, with, with Louis Grunberg adapted from various people. It's only six minutes and 36 seconds long. Then we've got Richard Hageman and Victor Young and Dimitri Tiomkin, Max Steiner, Alfred Newman, Paul Anka, The Longest Day, he wrote The March, Paul Anka, Jerry Goldsmith, Elmer Bernstein, and John Williams. Oh, The Cowboy's Overture by John Williams is nine minutes and 44 seconds long. It's major, major, major. You might as well throw John Wayne in there, right? That, my friends, eliminates quite a bit of the letter W. We're getting closer to the big W guy, and you know who he is, so stay tuned. Keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.